Hello everyone, today I am joined by Isaac. Hello there. Today we'll be doing an audio commentary of the episode Dalek from series one of Doctor Who. Episode six. Episode six, yes. Um, we'll say when we're going to play so you can watch along if you want, um, just to make it a bit more fun for the viewer. So... If you want to sync... If you want to sync this up with your own copy of Dalek, I would suggest put the timestamp to zero and press play. In three, two, one, go. Oh. Why are the TARDIS um, landings never as good as that anymore? I don't know. Utah, it's not the only time they've been there. Seven years ago. Find me. Twelve, I was fourteen. <laughs> I was um I was ten. It's oh, ironic yeah. that this is more of a um, museum than the actual space museum from Era. One <laughs> <laughs> head. Mm. Isn't the there closest? A... In... Go on. Isn't there a mechanoid somewhere in here? I don't know. Um, in one of the wide you shots. You can see a Jaggeroff spaceship from City of Death. Really? I've never noticed that before. I think, yeah, I don't think you can see it after this, but we've missed it. Was it the wide shot? The cl yeah, this is the closest Nine ever got to Ben. Mm. I'll see if you can... No, I don't think so. Oh. Yeah, you can see it, it's there. I think that thing at the back... I thought that was the mechanoid, but yeah. Uh, oh, alien just... right in front of the guards, Rose. <laughs> oh, these titles are really good. Yeah. Oh, it brings back so many memories. Mhm. Mm I'm a huge fan of the. Uh, prefer the. Uh, Used from series three onwards. Hmm. It just looks kind of flat. Yeah. Robert Shearman. Why haven't you come back? <laughs> Bad Wolf One descending. Wolf One. Do you think people realised by this point that Bad Wolf was a thing? Yeah, because Aliens of London opened with the kid vandalizing the TARDIS with Bad Wolf. Yeah. Gwyneth said the big Bad Wolf in The Unquiet Dead, so... Um, I think the face of Bo talks about it at one point in The End of Time. The, like the End of the World, sorry. I swear I've heard that name before, Diane Goddard. Oh, it's Adric Point Two. <laughs> Everyone's favourite companion. Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. I think Adam had potential. It's just um, companion, you know, betraying the Doctor was a good idea, but mm. time. Yeah, I think Russell T Davies said that. It was an example of showing that not everyone is made for this life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A picture of him. Yeah. He reminds me of uh, Freddie Mercury. I don't know why. <laughs> if you think six minutes is forever.
Do you know that they were very close to not getting the Daleks for this episode? Yeah, they were originally going to use an original monster, which was, which eventually was the Toclophane, wasn't it? Yeah, it'd be, yeah, it'd be like a an it be like a monster with the mind of an insane child that was chained up because mm. they were unsure if they were going to get the rights to the Daleks. I'm so glad they did. Where were you at the time when you um, when you first watched this? Well, I didn't watch series one on transmission. Mm. My first series was series two. My first ever episode was Rise of the Cybermen. Oh yeah. But uh, I mean, mm. I think in between Doomsday and the Runaway Bride, repeats of Doctor on BBC Three. Oh, so you caught up so, between then with series one. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, um, I can't remember ooh, what my first Eccleston story is, because I can remember as a kid catching the last couple of minutes of Aliens of London. I remember seeing the trailers for Aliens of London, but I don't remember watching yeah. any of Series 1 apart from Rose. Yeah. But I can remember buying the Volume 4 DVD, mm, which had that. Boomtown and um, two-parter. Yeah. I'm going to say that my first was Boomtown that that's I watched not, in full. That's not a bad one to start on. Uh, not bad at all. No idea who Jack Harkness was. <laughs> mm, it must have been weird without context. Yeah, I thought who was this? <laughs> Did you also know that this is based on a Big Finish audio adventure? Um, I, I, th I think I've heard of it. What was it called? It's based on Jubilee. Oh yeah, that's the one. There is a similar scene where the Sixth Doctor goes into a... Hello, is anyone there? And then the Dalek, you know, recognises him and says exterminate, hmm. but can't kill him because it has no weapon. This is such a great reintroduction. It's just a shame that it was spoiled in the... Um... And the and the title. <laughs> yeah. It was spoiled in the... Um, that TARDIS trailer. Yeah. Oh. oh, I love that. It's odd to see him so scared of the Daleks, because, uh... you know... Ever played the the last Dalek game? I did. Yeah, it was so hard. It was yeah. It took me like coming home from school a lot of times, just jumping straight onto the computer trying to beat it. <laughs> Chris Rexon is so good in this episode. Oh God, yeah. Do another series. Yeah. I'm still hoping he makes a comeback one day. Never know, he could come back to Big Finish. Mm. What do you think makes the Dalek scary? Probably business mm. story. It honestly believes that anything that isn't it isn't a Dalek should die. And yeah. that's what makes it so terrifying. Mm. Yeah. I think it's the fact that they're, you know, Nazi like as well. Yeah, that... totally not political at all. No. There's no politics with the Daleks whatsoever. <laughs> Think of any. 
but if people don't like Series 11, they're not going to want to watch, you know, any other Doctor Who. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So good as the Daleks. Hmm. This was the first we heard of, um, of the time war being with the Daleks. Yeah, because um, he mentioned it in the end of the world as like you know the we lost. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another thing. Chibnall gets hate for getting rid of Unit in Resolution. This. Outraged when Russell T. Davis got rid of the Time Lords. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sele selective memory, isn't it? <laughs> oh, why are Doctor Who fans so difficult to? Yeah. <laughs> I love that that line. Hmm. Never would. <laughs> <laughs> What you gonna do, sucker me to death? Oh, that bit's coming up. Yeah, it is. I am Freddie Mercury. Now recognize me. <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> Get back to the Daleks, come on. Uh, Big genius has never really seemed to work in Doctor Who. Mm. This just reminds me of... This reminds me of Clive. How he's in a little, little shed. Oh yeah. Why did he have to die? Hasn't he got his own big finished spin off series now? I think he has, actually, yeah. <laughs> they will literally. anyone will get a spin off. I'm waiting for the. Um, wow. Oh, the husband and wife from Voyage of the Damned. I want their spin off. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Banner Cafalata spin off. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of your nutters. Also, there's a bit of a... I know, I mean, it wasn't really a plot hole when it was transmitted, but... 12, it takes place after the events of the Stolen Earth. Oh, and Van Staten know what a Dalek is. Because they were all over. Mm. Or... Let's just go with what Moffat said, the cracks in time. Yeah. Russell, do you remember that giant Cyberman that walked over London? Well, that... I've invented cracks in time. That was referenced in, um... Yeah. Flesh and Stone, yeah. yeah. So, you changed my ending, Stephen. God damn and you, Stephen. I just, I just explained it. You bastard. <laughs> To cripple your season before it even starts. <laughs> I think before this um, episode came out, the Daleks had become a bit of a joke in pop culture. Yeah, they were a, yeah. a British icon, but not in the yeah. not in a good sense. I think it was kind of like. Oh, I can remember in the playground, I would stick my arm out and go, exterminate, exterminate. Mm. Yeah. The reputation of, like, hysterical killing beings rather than being an actual threat, but this episode cemented them as a threat again. Mm. I'd say it's similar with Resolution. Yeah. 
Moffat kind of made them his tenure, but I think Chibnall really did them justice. Yeah, he's. I thought that was the best episode of Series 11. I thought it was third best. What were your top two? The Demons of the Punjab was number one, and number two was Rosa. Okay. I really liked the uh, historicals in this series. I I... I kind of, I really like the historicals, because, um, it kind of reminded me of the Hartnell era, where they'd go back in time, and the danger wouldn't come from a monster, it would come from the people, time period, mm. and I find that more interesting, really, than shoving in a... Another dig at capitalism. Yeah, it's fine in series one. It's not political at all. Some kind of cop. He's some kind of communist, Russell. Would <laughs> <laughs> be good to have. I wish I. I wish there there was a cure for the common cold. Yeah, it's annoying. Oh, it's a nice lighting um, throughout this episode. Who directed it? Ahern? Hmm. What other episodes um, did they do? The series one finale, and I think he did Boomtown. Okay. Yeah, those episodes do look quite good. Edgar Wright was even offered to direct the first episode. <gasps> oh. But he was busy doing Shaun of the Dead. Why haven't they asked him back since? I mean... Yeah, I'd love for him to, to direct an episode. Mm. I do... I love this scene here, because it shows how cunning the Dalek is. Mm. doesn't scream for... When she mentions the Doctor, it doesn't scream for, you know, the Doctor must be exterminated. It plays to that. It says... I am in pain, help me. Hmm. I'd say the Daleks are scarier when they're more vulnerable. The series 3 2 parter when they shoved humans up their asses. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Uh. Yeah. Just watch the scene where Mr. Diagoras gets absorbed. Up its ass. <laughs> where is the where is the Dalek's ass? I don't know that. I don't remember the scene where Dalek Sec absorbs him. Mm. That's the Dalek's ass. <laughs> oh. Oh, because you do kind of feel sorry for it. Yeah. No, Rose. Putting Rose's shoes here, because more or less uh, the modern day audience, because um, they probably haven't seen a Dalek before and don't know what it's capable of. Mm. This is where it you know, really gets going. Oh, yeah. Genuinely surprised they got away with this. Mm. The um, sack. That sound. Yeah, it's skull cracking. I'm surprised they got away with that. Mm. Did they do something similar in the Empty Child? Yeah. Hmm. I wonder how they did that. That's CGI. Mm. So Murray Gold's music is brilliant here. Mm. Don't shoot it, I want it 
Oh, Henry Van Staten, shut up. Hey, for the eyepiece. <laughs> Where's Elaine the pain? We need her. Oh yeah, it's absorbing the internet. Mm. Went into its head. Wait, if he's if Henry Van Staten <laughs> is the internet, is he absorbing Henry Van Staten? Could be. It's a bit like Dalek Sec Mark 0.5. Oh my! Pornography. <laughs> I've actually seen a video where they uh, used here for the ray gun, and actually, uh, classic era. Hmm. A little bit routine, isn't it, running up and down corridors? <laughs> oh. Well, that extermination effect is so good. I love it. Alec doesn't even have to move, and they're all dead. Mm. That is just so effective. We only saw this once, didn't we? The um, rotating midsection. Yeah. Well, it was the feature you could do in the uh, the last Dalek game. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. It's good CGI as well for the yeah. for the time. I love this. Because they're all dead. Oh, I had a bit of a voice break then. <laughs> it's such a claustrophobic story as well. Uh, mm hmm. Rose. Rose. You're gonna burn. Rose is down there. Rose. <laughs> I don't get why loads of people are saying this is the first time the Daleks have um, think, uh, gone upstairs because I think it's due to when how I mean the times of transmission. In 1988, Doctor Who, no one... I mean, there were people watching it, but it was the audience was really small. Because mm. it was up against Coronation Street. Yeah. See why people would mistake this for the first... Nope, it's Remembrance of the Daleks. Mm. But this is still a great scene. I love how it just stares. Despite having zero expression, you know what it's thinking. It's like, I can still get you. Mm. And that POV. Defeated you. Bitch, please. <laughs> you think to the blue light? Because I think it's quite effective. Um, What blue light? What, on the eye? The Yeah, the eye. I like it, yeah. Because if it's... There's been a... Because I've seen, you know, those re-edits on Twitter where they take the Daleks from the 70s and 80s and they replace the pupil with the eye from the 60s. Mm. Yeah. No, Looking I... at the pupil, it kind of gives them a curious expression. Mm. God, oh, racial cleansing. It's the um, yeah. Torchwood film, okay. isn't it? Or, uh, mm. Sounds a bit like it, yeah. 
Yeah, if the Dalek gets out, it'll murder every living thing. So it's okay when this Dalek is overpowered, but the one in resolution, oh, that was too powerful. Yeah. I mean, they even say in the episode that it it gets its weaponry and old armor from a thing, from the um the thing that isn't the Black Archive. In my opinion, a lone Dalek is more scary and effective Mm. than five thousand Daleks, because damage one can do. Yeah. I mean, I'd hate to give. I mean, it's quite similar to, in this comparison, but Cyberwoman, because there's a speech in it. (laughs) Well, as much as I hate that episode, there is a nice speech where Jack says, that's how it starts, right here. And and before they find an army, capture humans, rebuild their forces, and they're assimilating worlds. Mm-hmm. Erasing populations, all because of tiny beginnings here. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only praise I'm going to give Cyberwoman. <laughs> now we're doing a great Dot 2 episode. I think for the next one we should do a crap one. <laughs> what, what are you thinking of? Fear her. <laughs> oh my god, I watched that recently. I watched the audio commentary. Oh god. And um, Julie Gardner was saying how it's such a good episode. I'm like... Really? That's the thing about the new series commentaries. They're always like, oh, everything is wonderful. We're all so great. But if you listen to classic series commentaries, they're allowed to laugh at it. Mm. Uh, Behind the sofa stuff for season 18. Oh, yeah, my season 18 box that came today. Pull a start. Tom just says, oh, I don't even remember doing this. (laughs) Oh. This is effective as well. Mm. Still looks pretty good. I think this is the best the Daleks have been in New Who, in my opinion. Yeah, I'd say this and Bad Wolf and the Parting of the Ways. Mm. Parting of the Ways, it's still amazing because they still kill anything that's not them. Mm. See, it's it's so, you know, it's so clever as well. It's not just uh, killing. Yeah, it's, killing. it's not just a raging killing machine. It is clever. Mm. Oh, I love that piece of music. I think that's what kind of makes it effective here. It's not scream. As much as I love them, you know, shouting exterminate before they kill someone. It lets people know no, that they're gonna kill, doesn't it? Moments like this where we're on the spot mm. and no, no, and it says nothing. That's really good as well. Such an arrogant bastard, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's digs at capitalism and fascism in this story. Mm. And capitalism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just the Dalek. <laughs> Much as I love this scene, this sorry, turn. As much as I love this scene, how did the Dalek turn on the TV screen? <laughs> well, it has its own remote controller. Um... Oh. I've just realised that the only time that the Doctor and the Dalek are in the same room together is right at the beginning and the end. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. That is interesting. Everything you were, everything you... Oh. The Dalek... 
Yeah, but the Doctor's in the exact same position as the Dalek. Mm. Everything he stood for, everything he had, it's all gone. Mm. And he's not going to get any orders, as the Dalek calls it. So good. Oh, apparently that's Nick Briggs's favourite line of the of the Daleks. <laughs> I can see why. Oh, I think because he said it. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard to talk about this episode because it's, you know, you get captured in it and you, uh, you know. Mm. From the 2005 run, so far, this would be the, the best episode. Um, oh yeah, definitely. Best so far, I'd say, yeah. Mm. I'd say from this point onwards, bar one episode, um, it's really good. A series one, do you mm -hmm. mean? Yeah. Part is kind of meh, but... Sorry? Just wanted... uh, I thought the Slovene two part was kind of meh. But... I, I think it's quite a fun story. Uh... I just think it's... I mean, it just goes from adult drama one minute to kids' TV the next. And I just mm. don't think it gels together very well. I love the political commentary on it. Mm. I love those yeah. close-ups of his eye. Um... Yeah, that's... Those can be quite annoying, I think, sometimes, but... They emphasise emotion. Uh, use close... Yeah, tip for filmmakers. Use close-ups when... It's to emphasise emotion. But if you use them for... Action scenes, it doesn't work so well. Mm. Do you think he's the true villain of the episode? Um. Say. But here's the thing: the Dalek. Fair. They're quite. They're quite similar. The Dalek and Van Staten. They're kind of. Up in their own views. Hmm. Stan's concerned with making money and s yeah. the stars, whereas the Dalek just wants to kill everything. Mm. <laughs> if I was near a Dalek, I wouldn't say kill me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the line I would have written. I probably would have said, "said What are you doing?" It's a weird sound. the blu-ray though they fix that what the sound next it sounds like the actual ray whereas there it sounded different mm. god 
everybody so happy. <laughs> As if the doctor didn't open the bulkhead, killed. Forget it. Hmm. As if it did, yeah. If it did kill Rose, the doctor definitely wouldn't have opened the bulkhead. I said, get out. I think. Oh, I can remember the bulkhead Dalek game. <laughs> Mm. I still hate that game. I hate it, but oh, it was a bitch to play. <laughs> Stupid. Pop up and start shooting at you, and you can't kill them. Mm. It's so annoying. Oh, why are you so critical of white students, Russell? <laughs> Them. There's so much I want to be angry about here. <laughs> Look, did you also know this fact? For the new series, were redesigned to fit Billy Piper's eyeline. Really? Apparently so. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, Didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I could be wrong, but I've heard that somewhere. Hmm. Well, it makes sense. Um... Uh, but if you notice in Victory of the Daleks, Karen Gillan is all and the Dalek has to look up at her. Hmm. He's had a bit of an existential crisis, isn't he? He? It's. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Can't talk about the gender of a Dalek. I'll get shot down. I even saw a stupid comment from Resolution that, that said, Now Chibnall's turned the Daleks into a woman. Oh, <laughs> God. And that, a lot of the original Dalek operators were dancers, so. Mm. This is one of my favourite pieces of music. I think it's called The Lone Dalek. Oh, yeah. I'll admit, there is some... Mm, I, I don't buy Rose's argument here. She says, Right, I know this killed hundreds of people, and I know it manipulated you to get its freedom. But look, Doctor, it wants to feel the sunlight. <laughs> Yeah, it's... Hmm. I get the trying to portray Rose as the one who sees good in a Dalek, but... No. Especially, it's just not the right monster for me. Mm, especially as it killed all those Time it Lords in the Time War. Exactly! It's great. This ages so well. It's great. animatronic, I think. Mm. Rose, I'm resonating concrete. I'm signing with the doctor here. <laughs> Mr. Go! <Go-Go>. No. <laughs> Yeah, she's still ki still shooting. Or shoot it, sorry. I, I wasn't. I wasn't. Oh, Rose. Admit, 
the alternate ending to this is kind of cool. To and then destroy the TARDIS. Wait, what happens? In the um, in the last Dalek game, mm. Doctor twice, and then you destroy the TARDIS. Oh, I don't remember that. Can... Yeah. I like how it struggles to speak. Mm. This kind of this dialect's like similar to the ones in Parting the Ways. How it hates is it hates its existence. Yeah. Uh, that story were made from um, hu uh, human remains, weren't they? Yeah. To be fair, they nicked that from Revelation of the Daleks. <laughs> this is pest control. Oh. Are better at dying. Atmosphere <laughs> thinking that up. <laughs> Kill him. I don't remember that bit. Which bit? Oh my god. So this wasn't the first Dalek to self-destruct. There was um the Supreme Dalek in Remembrance of the Daleks. Oh really? Uh, the Doctor pretty much talks it to death. It says that uh, you're the last Dalek in the universe, your home planet is gone, you have no purpose. And it, and it just itself. kills itself. Oh my god. Interesting on in how it uses the tears around its skirt to kill itself. Mm. It gives him a purpose. But... Yeah. Goodbye, Freddie Mercury. Sacramento. But if you wipe his memory, aren't people going to recognize him? Yeah. I mean, that'd be like, there's the Jagroff ship again. There's, I think there's an alien egg in there as well, from the film Alien. Oh, cool. Alien. Oh, here he comes, hello. Oh, you never know, Doctor. Yana. <laughs> You're not alone. Very good actor, no, is he? Didn't. Say he's mm. rolls. I'm res resonating cement. I've got to get Adam out. <laughs> what are you doing standing inside a box? You're in standing inside a box. <laughs> rolls. Is that the end? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that went past pretty quickly. Yeah, it did. The fourth great and bountiful human empire on our planet Earth at its height. I'm not. I think this is the one episode in series one that I don't like. I won't go far as to say I dislike it. It's just. It's just not as good as the uh, other ones. Simon Pegg. Yeah. Uh, so they got Simon Pegg, but they didn't get Edgar Wright. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and they got Nick Frost in Last Christmas. Oh yeah, and they've got um, Sean's mum. 
um, Harriet Jones. And, um, and Jessica Hines from Shaun of the Dead as well. She was Nurse Redfern. Oh, yeah. And they've got Matt Lucas, who had a small David part. Bradley and Bill Nye. Oh, yeah. I'm... Oh, such a good episode. So, that was Dalek. Final, final thoughts? Um, I still really like that episode. Oh, Me too. Oh, I was playing the long game. Oops. Um, I still love it. I think it's fantastic. From a filmmaker's perspective, I think the Daleks are perfect. Um, yeah. They've made them scary and ruthless really and menacing. And enjoyed the commentary. Yeah. I hope you've learned some facts from Isaac's um, noggin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope you have. <laughs> Shall... We shall be back with more commentaries, hopefully in the future. Yeah, um, put in the comments what one you'd like to see next. Of course, this this is for college, but there will be more to come in the future. Um, so... I mean, I'd like to do Fear Her so we can look at <laughs> a new arsehole. Oh, God, yes. Look forward to that in the future. So thanks for watching. I've been joined by Isaac. At my YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, I'll put a link to his uh, channel in the description. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.